The Creo Pegasus. This is easily one of the most hyped mouse to come out in India this year, and for good reason. On paper, you're getting a mouse that is better than the competition with a solid sensor, superior click feel, and a shape that is trusted by many. And it's actually cheaper. It's not every day that a mouse comes out that is cheaper than the competition and claims to be better. And I've seen people go as far as to comparing the Creo Pegasus with the Logitech G Pro X Superlite. So in this video, we're gonna find out just that. How good really is this $50 Creo Pegasus? Honestly, the Pegasus really impressed me right from the start, right from the unboxing experience. You get this really nice packaging and inside you get some of the most premium accessories that I've ever seen with a budget mouse. Uh, you get the mouse itself and the 2.4G receiver, but you also get this dongle extension that is USB Type-C to Type-A and it's actually made out of metal. It's really good quality and I compared it to the dongle extension that you get with the Superlite and this is better. And you also get the best cable that you can expect inside a mouse box. Like, it's supposed to be a charging cable, but since this mouse is tri-mode connectivity, uh, you can actually use it wired. And it's a soft cable that is very similar to the Paracord cables or the Speedflex cables that you get with, you know, Razer or Logitech mice. And yeah, I really like the cable. It's long enough for a pretty good distance. So if you wanted to use this mouse wired to get the best performance, you can actually do that. And the Pegasus doesn't really feel, uh, you know, heavier or different with the cable attached. Like the cable is that good. So now starting off with the design of the Pegasus, in my opinion, it's a hybrid between the G Pro X Superlite and the Pulsar X2. And I say that because you know, from the top and the sides, it's similar to the super light, but on the bottom, you have these cutouts to reduce weight, and this is really similar to the Pulsar X2. And this kind of design has two advantages. One, uh, you don't get holes on the top of the mouse, and two, you get, you know, superior build quality and a better grip because you're most probably not gonna break your mouse from the bottom. <laughs> you're gonna do it from the top, so it makes sense to, you know, go with this design. And honestly, uh, the build quality of the Pegasus is really good. It's made out of plastic, but it's really solid, sturdy plastic. Like, it holds up, and I think it can take some beating for a few years without any issues. And the coating on top of the mouse is actually really nice. So it's this matte soft touch coating, which actually improves your grip. And talking about grip, the Pegasus, in my opinion, is really comfortable for palm grip users and claw grip users. Now, you could also, you know, go with the fingertip grip, but it'll take some time to get used to it. And the clicks and the buttons on the Pegasus are actually really good for this price. It has really nice clicks, but these are, you know, considerably faster clicks compared to other mouse that I've used in this price. I'm personally, you know, coming from a Razer Viper Mini and the G Pro X Superlite, and the clicks on the Pegasus have significantly less travel, so like the actuation is really fast, like it goes in, comes back really quickly. Uh, so that took me some time to get used to, but these are really fast clicks. So, you know, if you're spamming uh, guns in Valorant or Counter-Strike, that's actually useful. And uh, some people might say that the clicks are a little hard or tight, but it's just that they have less travel, so they feel like that. But overall, the clicks are really nice. And the side buttons on the Pegasus are actually better than the G Pro X Superlite. Like, I've always felt that the G Pro X Superlite has mushy side buttons, but that's not the case uh, with the Pegasus. It has really clicky side buttons with less pre-travel, so, you know, you're gonna feel good when you're pressing them. Uh, it also has uh, one of the best middle clicks on any mouse that I've ever tested, because mostly, you know, in mice you have really mushy uh, middle clicks, they don't really give you much feedback, but 
the Pegasus actually has a really nice switch uh, below the middle click. So if you're pinging stuff in Apex, Valorant, or Counter-Strike, this is actually really good. Now my only gripe with the Pegasus is the scroll wheel. It's just not up to the mark. It's not on par with the other switches and clicks on this mouse. Now it's not bad, you'll get used to it. It's, you know, not really a deal breaker, but Every mouse that I've tried has a really nice smooth scroll wheel and this is just a little tight and it basically stops at every click. So you have a really, you know, tight scroll wheel. So if you're scrolling really fast, uh, it doesn't sound really good. Now, I think this can be improved in future version of the mice, but yeah, that's that. Now, talking about the rest of the mouse and talking about the specifications, it's got a really nice sensor. So you have a Pixar 3395 sensor, which is pretty good for this price. It's a really solid sensor. It can go up to 26,000 DPI. And uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it has tri-mode connectivity. So uh, you can connect this mouse with the 2.4G receiver. That's that. And you have a dedicated space inside the mouse uh, at the back to store that receiver. You can also connect it via Bluetooth, but uh, do note that you're only gonna get 125 Hertz polling rate in that Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, whereas with the 2.4G and the wired mode, uh, you're gonna get the full 1000 Hertz polling rate. Now that's uh, one of the specifications as well. So you get 1000 Hertz polling rate. Uh, there are mice, you know, around this price that give you higher polling rates, 2,000, 4,000, but unless you really have a very high refresh rate monitor, like at least 240 Hz, and you're, you know, a serious competitive gamer, I don't think you're going to notice the difference between 1,000 and the higher, you know, polling rates. It's good to have, but, you know, 1,000 Hz isn't really going to, you know, hold you back in your games or give you bad performance, so it's totally fine. And the sensor itself was really nice. Like I had no issues with tracking or precision. I was able to play Counter-Strike, Valorant the way I used to on my Superlight or the Viper Mini. And the glides on the mouse are also pretty decent. Like for this price, uh, these glides are pretty decent. I used the CyberArt uh, Esports Gaming mouse pad for the testing and the mouse glides around pretty decently. Like there is no, uh, weird sounds, it's pretty smooth. So even if you're like a low sense player, this is gonna be uh, fine for that. And uh, at the bottom, you have your DPI switch as well as the power and mode switch. So bottom is 2.4G, in the middle is off or wired. So let's say you connect it to the wire, uh, you're gonna get that and on top is Bluetooth. Now, uh, another gripe with this mouse is actually the RGB. I honestly feel if Creo did not give you RGB on this mouse, nobody would have cared, nobody would have complained. Uh, the RGB on this mouse is actually really interesting. So it's not always on, it's only on when it's idle. And the RGB strip is towards the front right here. Uh, and their explanation actually makes sense. You know, like when you're actually using the mouse and holding it, you don't see the RGB. You're looking at your monitor and not at the RGB of the mouse. So that makes sense. And it turns off as soon as you start using it. So that's that. And every time you turn off the mouse uh, and then turn it back on, basically you'll have to manually turn on the RGB as well if you're using it in the 2.4G mode. So you'll have to hold the middle click and the back button. And then the RGB starts and yeah, that's also an interesting approach. Now. Honestly, if you did not give RGB, that would be fine. It would save battery and make the mouse more simple, like the super light. Uh, let's say you go with the wired mode, you can use the RGB like always on, so that's that. Now, talking about RGB, another thing that Creo could actually improve uh, is their software. It's really generic and it doesn't look that aesthetically pleasing. Now, that doesn't really make any difference. It's just me, you know, giving this feedback. The software has all the basic features uh, like macros, RGB customization, DPI, all of that. Uh, but I feel that the Pixar 3395 sensor is actually a pretty decent sensor and it has some, you know, advanced features like debounce delay and uh, you can also change the liftoff distance, but it's not really there in the software. So I think they could add some advanced features for the enthusiast users and just clean up the software a little bit, you know, work on the UI UX a little bit. But other than that, uh, the, you know, Creo Pegasus gets all the essentials right. And talking about battery life, uh, the Pegasus has a 30 hour claimed battery life and it's 
actually true. I was able to get 25 to 26 hours of battery life in my testing. I haven't still charged it. Uh, it's around 20% now. So I feel the company is actually right when they say it's 30 hours. And I'm aware that there are mice in the market that give you 60 plus or 70 plus hours of battery life as well. But I feel the smaller battery also gives you the lighter weight and the Pegasus clocks in uh, at 57 grams. Although the company says it's 58, uh, when I measured it, it was 57 without the dongle. So that's that. And it beats uh, the super light which is uh, 62 grams with the glide cover on. And overall, for my final thoughts, uh, my experience with the Pegasus was actually really nice. Uh, I play on 800 DPI and my sense in game is usually very low. It's 0 0.4 in Valorant and 0 0.8 in uh, CS2. So I honestly enjoyed playing with the Pegasus. I had no issues, like there were no problems at all. And coming from the Viper Mini and the Superlight, it did not feel like a huge difference. I didn't feel like I came from a $150 mouse to a $50 mouse. They were really close in terms of performance. And that shows how good the Pegasus really is. And for the price of 4,500 rupees in India, I honestly recommend it. If you're looking for a wireless mice with an ambidextrous shape, uh, which is a clean and safe shape, uh, not too funky, you get the tri-mode connectivity, you get really nice clicks and side buttons, you get a really nice middle click, battery life is decent. Overall, it's a good package. It ticks all the boxes for a good budget ultralight wireless mouse. And it's a thumbs up from my side. I'll leave links down below in the description for you guys to check out the Creo Pegasus and you can buy it from the links as well. So that's that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe and like and hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss out on future uploads. But with that being said, my name has been Yusuf. You guys have been awesome. Stay awesome, keep smiling, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.